Well, I'm Chris Cannon for CardioSource, reviewing uh, one of the four prevention guidelines uh, that are just being released. Uh, this one is the um, guideline for assessment of cardiovascular risk. Now, this is a report of the ACC AHA task force, but was done in collaboration with uh, the NHLBI, which had originally commissioned these uh, prevention guidelines, but transitioned them to the ACC AHA group. Now, this assessment of risk guideline is a very new one, and the um, expert work group uh, endorsed the existing and widely em uh, employed paradigm for matching the intensity of prevention efforts with an individual's absolute risk. Now, the group also recognized that none of the risk assessment tools or some of the novel risk markers that have been examined and recommended have been formally evaluated in randomized controlled trials of screening strategies uh, as compared with clinical events and, and outcomes. But the second point here of these 10 points to remember is that the new pooled cohort equations for estimating atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk were developed from sex and race-specific proportional hazard models. And these included covariates for age, treated and untreated systolic blood pressure, total cholesterol and HDL, current smoking status, and a history of diabetes. And so we'll take here a, a, an example. Uh, a 55-year-old white man whose total cholesterol is 213 and HDL of 50 has uh, no treatments for blood pressure and a measured blood pressure of 120 systolic, non-smoker, no history of diabetes. His 10-year risk is 5.3%. And women with similar profile would have a 2.1% uh, 10 year risk. Now, point three is that risk estimation is based on group averages that are then applied to the individual patients. And this approach balances an understanding of an, absolute, an individual's absolute risk of cardiovascular disease and the potential treatment benefits against the potential absolute risks for harm from that therapy. So for this framework, treatment can be targeted to those most likely to benefit without undue risk of harm. And in this uh, context, it's a uh, risk discussion. So that brings us to point four. A risk discussion could include the assessment of a patient's risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and the potential benefits, negative aspects, risks, and patient preferences regarding initiation of relevant preventive therapies. Only a small fraction of trial participants will have events, and so only a fraction of those could be prevented by any therapy. And so using either approach, the clinician must really apply the average results obtained from groups of patients to the individual patient that he or she is uh, working with. So point five is um, that the race and sex-specific pooled cohort equations to predict 10-year risk of first hard cardiovascular event uh, should be used in non-Hispanic African Americans and non-Hispanic whites ages 40 to 79. Use of sex-specific pooled cohort equations for non-Hispanic whites may be considered when estimating risks in patient populations other than uh, these two groups. Now, if after quantitative risk assessment, a risk-based treatment decision is uncertain, assessment of one or more of the following uh, could be added. So family history, high sensitivity CRP, calcium uh, scoring, uh, and an ankle brachial index. And so these added risk markers could be considered uh, to inform treatment decision making. Key point number seven, uh, the contribution to risk assessment for a first atherosclerotic cardiovascular event uh, using apolipoprotein B, chronic kidney disease, albuminuria, and uh, cardiorespiratory fitness 
is deemed uncertain at present. Carotid intimamedia thickness is not recommended for routine measurement in clinical practice for risk assessment of a first atherosclerotic event. It is reasonable to assist, uh, assess the traditional atherosclerotic risk factors every four to six years in adults who are 20 to 79 years of age and free of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, and thereby estimate the 10-year risk every four to six years uh, in these patients. Uh, Assessing 30-year uh, or lifetime atherosclerotic risk-based uh, on the traditional risk factors may be considered in adults ages 20 to 59 who don't have atherosclerotic disease and who are not at high short-term risk. And so, as you can see, this is a really new look incorporating what we know on risk assessment uh, and updating that to expand it with some new markers and a new risk calculator. As such, we hope you find it useful uh, in updating our risk assessment and managing patients. So for CardioSource News, I'm Chris Cannon.